Something that we try to track really hard here is the expansion of the domestic surveillance state. Since January 6th, we've seen a secretive postal unit, which has been spying on Americans. We have seen the expansion of the U.S. Capitol Police, which is not subject to Freedom of Information Act requests all across the country. Obviously, in terms of what the FBI has been doing, both in terms of potentially, you know, infiltrated staged events, but also in terms of what we know already about confidential informants. This latest one is just the, you know, another drop in the bucket of secretive divisions within the U.S. government, which have wide spanning surveillance power. So let's put it up there on the screen. Now, this Yahoo News story is called Operation Whistlepig in what Whistlepig inside the secret CBP unit with no rules that investigates Americans. Now, a lot of this came to light because of an investigation into a journalist, Allie Watkins. Allie Watkins, you guys might remember, uh, she was a BuzzFeed news journalist then who worked at the New York Times, who was actually revealed to have been sleeping with one of her sources on Capitol Hill and getting tip-offs of classified information in terms of Russiagate and it majorly benefited her career. Now, it turns out, though, that the investigation into Allie Watkins and the eventual source that she had been sleeping with was actually run by a Customs and Border Patrol Protection Division. Now, inside that division, quote, few rules and routinely using the country's most sensitive databases to obtain travel records, financial and personal information of journalists, government officials, congressional members, their staff, NGO workers, and others. As many as 20 different journalists were investigated as part of the division's work, which actually led to referrals of criminal prosecution against some of the agents that were involved in the case. Now, of course, they were never indicted and charges were never actually pursued against them. But what's fascinating to me is that the eventual referral of criminal process and a lot of the transcripts and stuff that have come out, Crystal, is that there are all sorts of these secret little divisions that we have no idea about. When you think CBP, I think the border and the TSA. Yeah. You know? I'm just mm -hmm. like, yeah, whatever. Well, they have something called the National Targeting Center, which was created after 9-11, to, quote, identify potential threats crossing the borders, but that also gives them access to all of these different databases that they can get used once you arrive here in the United States, and then they can use their access for a lot of these things in order to pursue and get information about you without a warrant, necessarily, of a wide-spanning database of who exactly that you are, and you can including your cell phone records and your emails as well. Yes, that's, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. And you can see in the details of this story how dangerous it is, these aggressive leak investigations, mm -hmm. which in this instance really, literally had no rules to constrain their behavior and what data they ultimately accessed. The details of this are really crazy. First of all, I should say, Allie Watkins swears that she did not get information from the man she yeah. was sleeping with, who happened to be what, he was like a high level, he was like a committee high level member Senate. on the select Senate Intelligence right. Committee. Yeah. Okay, sure, I just want, to put, okay. just want to put her side of the story out there. Um, but according to this report, and the one dude whose last name is Rambo, who they focus in on in particular, who was doing most of the digging on Allie and then some mm -hmm. of these other journalists, this started not as a leak investigation, but it started because he wanted some friendly journalist allies to focus on um, trafficking. Okay. Okay. So then he starts to look into Allie Watkins because she's kind of the it reporter of the moment, and he yep. thinks this is all according to him. He thinks she, she has very popular has uh, cachet. Describe. Yeah. yeah. Thinks she has cachet and that she could be an ally on this thing that they're working on with regard to trafficking. So he starts then just vetting her, in his words, which means pulling data on her from every database that they keep, including ultimately some that are highly controversial that can capture not just, you know, your travel data or things that you might be able to potentially, you know, access, but things like what you're actually messaging. He sees that she's traveling to different countries alongside this guy that's a staffer. James Wolfe. He yeah. starts to put it together of like, oh, they're having a relationship, and oh, you know, she's a journalist and he's on this committee. 
And then it tur- he gets the FBI involved, and it turns on to this wholesale onslaught, mm-hmm. um, not just with Ali, but with other journalists as well. And yeah, I mean, the whole thing is extraordinarily bizarre and extraordinarily troubling. Some of the things, some of the details in here are also quite interesting, which shows just the mental gymnastics and inconsistencies that people oftentimes hold, which is that Ali and um, this guy, again, his last name Mm. is Rambo, he scheduled a sort of clandestine meeting with her to feel her out. At 1 a.m. in the morning. And try to figure out if he was right about this relationship. And he set it up. She thought he was a potential source. Right. They end up going to a bar. He's drinking whistle pig. What, what is that bourbon? I don't yeah. know. Anyway, that's why it's it ends up being Operation. It's very good bourbon. I haven't tried it. It's too expensive. <laughs> that's why it ends up being Operation me. Whistle right. Pig. I should know this having lived in, yeah. in Kentucky. Um, but anyway, afterwards, she is freaked out because he keeps her there for like four hours. Yeah. They're talking. And she's super spooked about like, what the hell was that and what, what was going on? And she suspects he used a fake name, which he did. Uh-huh. So she went back to the bar and was able to pull his credit card receipt that had his real name on it Uh. and figure out who he was. And the funny part, the part that's like shows people's inconsistency and how they think about things, is he was so outraged by the invasion of his privacy that she had pulled this credit card slip and figured out his name. Meanwhile, He's pulling everything yeah, he's pulling out. He's pulling on her, her messages, and everybody her else. travel records, what she's doing, who she's sleeping with, her her family. I mean, he right. pulled her family members' records, all this stuff. And yet he's he's super outraged and can't believe that she went and, you know, pulled this credit card receipt to try to figure out who this creepy dude was who kept her there for for four hours, pushing her for all this personal information and seemingly knowing already a lot of personal information about her. But the bigger picture here is how many other government agencies do we not know about oh, that yeah, have these? Right. It's same, like when I found out about the post office. I'm like, your what? job is the mail. What yeah. are you doing? And and yeah. because there are very few guidelines that are put into place with this unit, then if there's no rules, then you can't bl- break the rules. No. Yeah, exactly. So there was nothing you know that they could really do about this. The agency tried to pawn it off like this was all this one guy. He was a rogue actor, et cetera. And what he in, in, you know intimates and indicates with what he's saying here is that this was this was a, a larger scale operation. He wasn't the only one. Totally it was fully sanctioned, sanctioned yep. by, you know, his superiors. The FBI was brought in. They were involved. They were aware of what was going on as well. So very ugly and very troubling story. No, I think it's absolutely uh, 100% indicative of a much larger, bigger unit, you know, within the Customs and Border Patrol, and it's very clear that there is some really sketchy stuff going on, that they have the ability to just run anybody they want willy-nilly through their databases, even if they don't you know, have cause necessarily. In this case, he's like vetting a reporter to see if she'd be good to leak to. And he's like, oh, let me look at her travel records. Yeah. You know, it's like you shouldn't be able to pull all of these types of information um, based, you know, with nothing. And yet, there's no oversight. He was referred for criminal prosecution. He was never prosecuted. It's just, you know, how much of the stuff you never even hear, hear about? Yeah. That's the real question. That's exactly right. That's yeah. the really disturbing part. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll have more for you later. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.